Hello and welcome to the 22nd video in this series Making Simple Floppy Robin for Android using Kokos 2DX. So last video then we started on the road of actually calling a function in the Java from C++ and let's carry on directly with the coding now in this video to actually try and get that far at least in this video. So we want to enclose um, our functions we're going to declare in an extern C here like so and then the only function we'll declare for now is let's call it call my Java side J and I like so and we'll put a number integer as an argument in there as well. And what we need to do then is actually drop this method into, in fact I copy this lot and I need to go into uh, my JNI helper.cpp and make some spaces and paste that in there and obviously I also need to include and it's uh, my JNI helper.h like so so there's an include file in there and the extern obviously we don't need okay so that's the initial declaration of the function now you remember in the last video that I showed the simple audio engine files, I'm just going to see if I've still got them, I have here. Well, I, we, what we're basically going to do is we're going to copy and paste in this uh, stuff here, this first function, this second function, and the third function. With the only difference being that the second function here will have another argument, a car pointer, to replace class name and the reason is is because simple audio engine only calls functions inside this class therefore always uses class name whereas I want the ability in ours to change the class that we're going to call the function in if necessary so I'm going to take that code from my um, file I've got prepared here and I'm going to put the definitions at the top as well, no actually no, I'll just paste the functions in to start with and then paste the definitions in as well because you might as well download this and because it's not part of really the the tutorial this stuff, oops I've put that in the wrong place, that needs to go inside here okay so the functions are in and things have gone red because I need to add some includes in there as well and I'm sorry about the copy and paste, copy and, paste and we'll be back to coding but below here so we're including the JNI helper, we're basically mirroring exactly what's in Simple Audio Engine to be able to use the uh, use these functions here. Uh, one thing I wanted to do actually is make this a lot smaller because it was a pain in all the videos, that's better, okay. So I've got the Android log print, the log tag here is what will be printed um, before any lines of logging for our application so we can filter the, the logging information in the terminal. Our structures in here, you'll see if you compare it with Simple Audio Engine it um, mirrors it almost exactly with the one difference being the class name argument is supplied like so. So now all of that's in, all we need to do now is actually write the code for the call my Java side JNI. So to do that then uh, first thing we need to do is let's actually make some logging stuff now so let's say log d and let's say c++ and call and because I want to make sure this is all okay inside the debugger this like so and then what we'll do is we'll say j and i uh, method info and then we'll call it method info like so, so that's our method info structure and like I said this copies exactly the format that we have inside the simple audio engine so what we'll say then is if then not and get static and hopefully it'll have it static method info good and then sending in the method info and then the method that we want we'll call it exactly the same thing so call my Java side J and I. Now we want to put the what type of function it is in speech marks. It takes an integer. Oops. It takes an integer and it returns a void. So it gets the brackets with an I inside and a V like that. And last but not least, we want to take our class name from the top here and drop that in like so. So that's done like that. So we say if not, 
get static method info in this way then we've not found the method so we'll just dump something to the log and it would probably crash anyway if it doesn't find this because I've not put anything in to secure this neither will I on the Java site so C++ failed call there and then we'll just simply return from the function otherwise what we can do is actually say that the method's been found so I'll drop it in here so I'll put found call here and now we can say method info uh, environment, no proposal there. Oh, it's dot. It's a dot, isn't it? Oops. Dot environment then, and then call. And there should be in here a call. Goodness, there's a whole list of them, but there should be a call static void method somewhere in here. It's probably quicker to type. Call static void method, and then we send in our method info dot uh, class ID. Oh, my spelling is, is a mess. I'm missing the Xcode um, IntelliSense already. Method info class ID, and then we want the method info and the method ID. And then now we give our arguments, if any, and our argument is this num here, which is also sent. So our integer. So that now, actually, that line there will have called the function inside our Java. So what we need to know, do now is call delete and delete local ref, and then it's just the class ID, like so. And that's all there is to it. This function now, if we call this function in somewhere in, and what's gone wrong there? Okay. If we call this function somewhere inside our C++ code, then so call my Java side J and I, then that will be called inside the Java. But before we do that, let's go up into the Java and actually set the situation up where we can do this. So I said I was going to call the class CJ and I helper. So I'm going to go up to our package and right click and go new and not package. Uh, right click new and class. And I'm going to give it this name here and I'm going to leave everything else as it is. And now we, what we want is we've got public class and C J and I helper. And the first thing I want to add in here actually is a private and I'll say static string. And you can tell I'm not used to, in fact, uh, we want that to be a final string. And you can tell I'm not used to the IntelliSense in Eclipse and we'll say that also we'll use the cocos 2 d x debug info and I'm also going to put a Java on the end of here as well so we've got our string then declared final uh, ah, it should be final static shouldn't it I think instead of static final is that right Still not, because I haven't given it a name. Good. Okay. Is that right? There you go. My familiarity with Eclipse and Java is, is, is coming through now. Okay, so now that we've done that then, what we'll actually want to do is I want to actually show you in this video... Uh, in fact, no, we'll do that in the next video, otherwise this will drag on too long. The thing I want to do in the next video is actually call a function inside our main activity running it on the main UI thread because that's something you'll need to be able to do because if you start trying to do things on not on the main UI thread you can end up with some unexpected problems. Anyway, I digress. So just for now then we want to add in a public static and void and then we want to take exactly the same name as we have here for the function declaration and the syntax is the same for both Java and for C in this case. So that's our class with its static method, call my Java side, and we're simply going to say then um, log.d, and I'll just put some brackets there and do and put a tag and then some speech marks for the moment, just so that the IntelliSense brings this in. If I hover over this, will it do it? Import log, good. Okay, with our tag, and then we'll put this called in Java with and then I think we can just add the number on like this and it will print it to the screen. So that's all we need to do there 
And what I'll do now is go back into the C++ code and we need to find somewhere to call this. And let's do it when things have actually loaded up. So let's go into hello world scene.cpp. At the top of here, let's include a header file and we're going to include the my JNI helper.h. And inside here, then I want to call our function that we've declared and we'll just call it with the number 10 for now right at the initialization stage somewhere at the top here so I'll just do that here with the number 10 and that should give us a log then of something appearing in 10 so what I'm going to do now is you should be familiar with this step because I might cut it out the video to keep uh, keep things a bit quicker I'm going to export the signed application package then Okay, so the package has now been built. I'm not going to show you uh, my device because we don't need to in this video. I'm just going to check the device is there. It is, and just now install the package, and it should be simple floppy robin 1.0. So I just let that install. And then what I want you to see actually is the logging information. So I'm just very quickly going to go into something so I can get some text whilst that's installing. Can I see that it's installed? So what I'm going to do in the bash here is actually in another screen, I'm going to type adb logcat-v time. And what that means is we'll get all the log information with a time strip, but then I'm going to pipe it to grep and only the things that begin with cocos D, uh, 2dx debug info. So I'm just press enter on that and we can already see from earlier on today some of the last debug info. So now I'm going to go in and run the application and what we should see is the call to Java or a crash, one or the other. So I'm just running the application. Extension you can see is there. And now you can see and you can probably hear the music so I'm going to close the app already. And now you can see that it actually worked. Hello World TPP fired up. We had C++ call my side Java, and then here in the Java section itself, we've managed to call the Java JNA with the value of 10. So good, so that's quite a bit of progress then, actually. Um, we've managed in a very little bit of code here to access this function here, this opens up, calling it from C++. And what we'll do in the next video is, with another trivial example, is go the other way from the Java to the C++. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.